definitely a vet for cats and dogs. There's nothing wrong with that. But occasionally, you know, you have to mix it up a bit, don't you? And just how much I'm about to mix it up, well, that's what worries me. Chris is answering a call from senior keeper Tim Faulkner at the Australian Reptile Park. Well, we've got a snake and uh, we've brought her out a winner and she's just off of food. She just hasn't pepped up. OK. What sort of snake? One of the snakes has come out of its winter hibernation but is still not eating. Her name is Atomic Betty. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, that's not a snake, that's a monster. Last time Chris confronted a snake at the reptile park, it was Queen Bee. She's having you for lunch. She weighs in at 35 kilograms. But Atomic Betty tips the scales at a massive 100 kilograms. And she's been off of food. For a period each year, we cool her down mm. and winterise her. Um, now, we've brought her back out of that, bumped her temperatures up, and normally she'd be looking for food. Whilst pythons don't eat every day, they do eat regularly, so the fact she hasn't eaten for three months, that's a long time, and she'd be starting to struggle because of that, so there must be something going on here. A reticulated python can easily kill a human by constriction. We're not too worried about the bite. Uh, it's, it's bad, the teeth are like razors and lots of them, but it's the coil, and it's the second coil and the third coil we're worried about, and they, they can just crush. Despite his reservations, Chris needs to get inside Atomic Betty's home for a closer examination. It's not like we're dealing with a python that's got no previous convictions. Atomic Betty has struck before and she's really called around someone. So if she does that again and does it properly, then someone could be in a lot of trouble here. Let's get some people together and let's do it. Yep, I'll get the troops. OK. See you soon. I put some local in, mate. I'm sorry. Bruno, a seven-month-old Boston Terrier, has just arrived at Bondi's Referral Hospital Sash in a critical condition. And he's actually been run over by his mother. The poor little guy's got a back leg which is snapped in half and he's also got a tear in his lung which is leaking. So the back leg is the least of his worries. We really need to just get that air out of his chest because that's what's going to kill him. Before a chest drain is inserted, Bruno's owner, Jackie, is allowed into the emergency room for a quick visit. Hey, little man. Guess your mum. Yeah, it's all right, yeah, it's all right. I was driving up the driveway and when Bruno saw the car, he raced over and I didn't see him at all. Well, I went into panic mode to start with because we didn't think he was going to make it and just broke down, basically. Yeah. He's a gorgeous dog. He's got a really sweet little nature. You know, it, it happens a lot, it's awful, because the owners feel so guilty and um, you know, I feel really feel for them, it's terrible. Andrew must now plunge a trocar into Bruno. Come in. Come. The air that's trapped between Bruno's lung and chest wall has to be sucked out urgently before the puppy's system crashes. Come on. <laughs> so plan is over his own head. Uh, we got myself second, Luke third, Mick and Chris at the door. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim's organised a strike team of six keepers. All good, let's do it. Their dangerous mission is to pin down the lethal Atomic Betty so Chris can investigate why she's refusing to eat. Go, bring it back, bring it back, coils off. That's it. Right up, one more on. Over you switch hands. Keep that off. Coil it. Come on, Mick, jump in. Chris, can you come in? Yeah. Now, we've got a problem with that coil on top. Coil on, Chris. Oh, Someone on front. Right, up. let's settle. Right. Let's settle. Let's Easy. Up. Hang on. You all right? Obi, I'm going to get neck with Obi. Someone got back. Yeah. Right, up. I'm going to push back for you, Obi. Stop moving all that. Settle. Stop for a sec. Everyone good? Nice high catch, high mate. So I need a heart. So a heart's going to be a third of the way between a head and a cloaca, which is what about there. All right, so it's a third, it's about, who yeah. about here? Beautiful. Chris is checking out Atomic Betty, one of the most lethal snakes in the world. Hold on for a sec. Here we go, everyone on. You all right? Yeah, pass me that. That's it. Right up, she's good again. You can see her relax <laughs> there. <laughs> the python is listless and hasn't eaten for more than three months. 
you can just imagine when, once he wraps around, there's that much muscle around you that you just stand no chance. And no one can feel any bumps in the skin. There's no, no lesions or any sign of parasites there. Oh, pretty good. Importantly also, her hydration was normal. So she wasn't dehydrated at all. So my feeling is that she's come out of a hibernation a little bit slowly. What I might do is give her a vitamin B shot just to try and kickstart her whole system. Yeah, yeah good. Good, there we go. By giving her a hit of a B vitamins, she's going to be ready to, to take on the world. The keepers, vets. Yeah, someone just stay on that midsection so she can't come round. And we're just going to go one, two, three, hey, all yeah. out. It became abundantly right. clear why she has that little name, Atomic Betty. Because when she goes, she goes off. I'm going to leave everyone out. Back out. Go, go. Yep, no worries. You got stop robes. Yeah, Chris. Did she get anyone? No. <laughs> she was just scared, she hey? She was saving that up, wasn't she? Oh, she didn't she didn't try to bite. She was just scared and just tried to get away. I'm gonna leave everyone out, back out. Go, go. Fingers crossed after going through all of that, the vitamin injection does its job and Betty does get her appetite back. We'll know in a few days' time whether she's ready for dinner. I can't wait to see what's on the menu. Marie, this isn't a normal Marie. I know. Come no. through. Chris's torrid day is not over yet. That evening, another call out. She ate the like but the entire the, bottom of this it, which bottom is about. Bit a metre and a half long. Okay. Worried cousins Genevieve and Hilary are almost certain their Pomeranian Marie has swallowed some bikini string. The fact she's got a back arched says that she's, she's certainly sore there. Mm. Well, she's letting me feel all of it apart from one area. You hear that sound? Oh. The two 19-year-olds arrived home to find their six-month-old puppy vomiting. I didn't hear a peep out of her and I actually thought someone took her because it was that quiet. Hilary and Genevieve are two of our most colourful, interesting clients. What's that? That's, this is like, it's you know, when friend. you're a baby and you have a blanket and you like grow up and you take it with you, that's what Marie does with her hat. You have to understand they not only love this dog, they live their lives through Marie. And I just said to her, Marie, I don't, don't think you're old enough yet to handle a mobile phone. So Twitter's out of the question. If she <laughs> has her own sombrero, um, which can be seen on her Facebook page. She has 81 friends at the moment, including Chris. It's just hard to actually keep it quite a serious mind. You do actually have to keep a focus and realise that you've got a sick dog here. Chris is hoping x-rays will help him confirm if the swimwear string is causing a blockage. It's like a, a, a drawstring. It pulls tight and actually locks that intestine up into a loop. And if that's the case, that intestine can actually die, die off, and that can be really serious really quickly. Come on. <laughs> At Sash, Andrew's attempting to put a chest drain into car accident victim Bruno. got to get it in the right place because if you're wrong you can hit the lung you can hit the heart and that would just be disastrous you're actually making a hole in the chest wall okay. so it's a real race to seal that off and suck the air back out before the animal crashes oh, it's dropping in you. Bruno's blood oxygen levels suddenly start dropping if they plummet too far the puppy could go into cardiac arrest Come on, buddy Ideally, his blood oxygen level should be above 95%, and now it's dropping to below 85. We just need to stabilise him quickly. How can you go from 96 to 85? Two seconds. But only a few minutes later, the tension starts to ease as Bruno's blood oxygen levels begin to climb. 94. That's a good number. Bruno's now being hooked up to a pump that will keep sucking the air out of his chest overnight. There you go, little man. Says, what's going on? He's eight kilograms. He's taken on a car that weighs practically a ton. I mean, he's alive, but he's not out of the woods yet. It's okay, let's go. Okay, ready. X-ray. 
Chris is hoping x-rays will confirm whether or not six-month-old Marie has swallowed a large section of bikini string. The unfortunate thing about a swimming costume is that it doesn't show up in x-rays. It's not like bone, but the characteristic signs of blockage or an internal problem are a gas buildup and also an intestine that is all tightly coiled up. You know, it's, it's basically uncomfortable and it's inflamed. Do you want to come through and yes. have a look at Marie? I'll show the x-rays as well. The problem I face is that I know how much Marie means to them and they're going to be looking for an answer right now. The other problem I have is that I don't have one. But what happens if you choose to operate and then it's not in there? Exactly. This dog's essentially my baby. Um, Hilary um, bought her for me. <laughs> In, um, all, in all seriousness, Genevieve's brother died about six months ago. Obviously she was beside herself and we just moved out together. I mean, we don't do anything without Marie. The other day we went and saw a psychic and Marie came with us. <laughs> and um, He's been to the museum, yeah, the art gallery. She saw Spider-Man. She's pretty much one of us. I have a laugh with the girls about the way they treat Marie, but when you know what they've been through, it makes you understand why that little dog is so important to them. Oh. Marie will have to stay in the clinic overnight and the girls have decided she needs VIP treatment. Are we like able to bring stuff? What do you mean by a few things? Just got a shoe and just, just got a bed. And her book, she might like, she might ask like a picture of us. Take her message here is a few things. Okay. I'll see you soon. A few things, you reckon? We'll see. The cousins have arrived back at the Bondi Clinic with their own special care package for their sick puppy, Marie. All right, let's go and find a place for it all. Okay, correct. Um, am I meant to be reading that to her tonight, or? If you could, we're just, just a picture. Just I, I've marked the page where we're up to. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Where's she going? Hilary and Genevieve believe the six-month-old puppy has eaten some bikini string. It appears to have caused a serious blockage. Is she going to say, how Mary? No, we'll leave the religion for the camera. <laughs> Good night, Squish. So if anything happens during the night, if there's any change, I'll let you know. But if she remains stable, we'll talk in the morning and then decide whether she goes to surgery. If nothing's changed, she probably will go to surgery first thing. Sash, Bruno, who was run over by his owner, has managed to survive a life-threatening torn lung. X-rays have confirmed it's completely healed. Now the emergency team can start operating on his badly fractured back leg. Bruno's battle's not over yet. Going into surgery is going to be the biggest test on his lungs. When he's under anaesthetic, that could re-rupture the torn lung and then we could go straight back to square one. A specially contoured plate is moulded to the bone and attached with a series of screws to stabilise the leg. Out of money. It's a difficult operation to get the leg aligned perfectly, but after several attempts, Andrew is finally happy. That's come together really nicely. It's worth the struggle. His future's looking pretty good, yeah. I think um, Jackie would be very happy with with him in, the, in a couple of weeks' time and he'll be running around the place again. I'm exhausted, Mum. I need to sleep. So she was a graduate of puppy school? Yeah, she did really well. Really? Yeah. Uh, you, you'll understand why I'm questioning that. Cool. <laughs> She's not happy. She must be sore or something. Yeah, no, I think she is. The next morning, Chris and head vet nurse Neil are confronted with a very cranky, sore Marie. Oh the Pomeranian's condition has deteriorated overnight. More x-rays are taken, but they're still inconclusive. This is the big issue. We cannot be sure that that cord is actually inside Marie. Yet Marie looks worse, so what do you do? I know the concept of a surgery probably doesn't appeal to you too much. It's a bit daunting. Yeah. 
but the concept of... I'd rather her, like, go in and be overdone within an hour than be in pain for three days. Yes, exactly. That's my thinking. Marie, did we bring you some flowers? Look! As you would if anyone was sick, you'd come bearing gifts. So we bought red flowers, um, the tulips, which are Marie's favourite, and the Get Well balloon, which hopefully she won't chew and ingest. My only worry is the girls don't truly realise just how serious this surgery is. The big unknown is what we see when we get in there. Is there a cord? Is there not? And if there is a cord, what sort of damage has it done? Is it causing a, basically the, the intestine to die off? If that's the case, we've got a big surgery. Yeah, nothing yet. Chris has been forced to open up Marie to find out whether a piece of swimwear cord is causing a dangerous blockage. Huh. All right. So there's a little bit of swimsuit actually inside her cecum. Now, if it's been sitting there and, and essentially fermenting and causing irritation, then that may explain why she's been sick. It's almost like appendicitis for a dog. It's proof at last that Marie did make a meal of that bikini. But there is some good news. The thing is, where it caused the problem is actually pretty close to home. It's only got to go down the rest of the colon and then it's out. So rather than making a cut and actually potentially causing an infection, I'm actually going to milk it through, through the colon, so it only has maybe a few centimetres to travel and actually then leave the body. No running, please. With the bikini string almost out, it's now up to Marie to finish the job herself. The wait begins. <laughs> You're a good boy, Tony. You're a good boy. Hey, hey that, that's for the kids. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good boy. Lucky survivor Bruno is ready to go home. It's all clear for his lungs, and his legs should be fully healed in eight weeks. Hopefully, he'll, he'll have learned his lesson. He'll steer clear of cars from now on, but uh, they do tend to forget. Yes, he is. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? He's shaking like a leaf. He knows you were behind the wheel of the car that got him. Oh, that. Hello, gorgeous boy. He's got to learn to run a bit faster. You've got to learn to drive a bit slower. He's such a cute boy. Oh, it's really good. So pleased to have him coming back home. Yeah, it's a relief. I can stop worrying about him now. <laughs> Little tough nut. Now, this is a small guy compared to normal. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is about to find out if Chris's vitamin shot has worked and kick-started Atomic Betty's appetite. Well, it's been a week since she's had her injection, so hopefully that's pepped her up. We're going to offer her a food item today and see if she takes it. Oh, she's interested. Look at that. There we go, you beauty. Good. We've got to feed the snake something, whether it's rabbits, rats or goats. I mean, for us, it's, it's relatively similar, but I mean, the goats for human consumption, so it's not, a, it's not someone's little pet. An hour later, and Atomic Betty has a very full belly. We're just so happy that it's worked. You know, this is what we wanted. Bit, bit of privacy, please. Two days later, the bikini-munching Marie finally answers the call of nature. Nice little present. Yeah, now I've got to go through and look for it. The answer could be in a bag. Chris has only found a small portion of the swimwear cord that went missing. Just the thickness and the fact it's got that elastic there. It's swimming costume, without a doubt. Where the rest is remains a mystery. Later, Chris carries out a special house call. Oh, oh look how excited she is! Yeah, just <laughs> gently, gently, gently. Hilary and Genevieve have bought Marie a new bed for the big occasion. Seriously though, you do have to keep it quiet because she will pop those stitches out if, if she keeps on running around. She does that a lot. All right, I'll, um, I'll see you later. Thank you Thanks so, so much, Chris. Chris. We really appreciate it and Marie does as well. We'll, um, 
We'll definitely be sending um, updates. Yeah, I know. I, I'll Thank miss you. you all. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you guys. soon. See you, Marie. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.